Welcome to Prime Time Pitch. We are back at it for another episode of Freddy's Nightmare Season 2. Tonight we'll be covering Episode 7 and 8. Uh, so, getting right into it with Episode 7, Silence is Golden. Uh, in this one, after accidentally assaulting a mime, obnoxious radio DJ Rick Rake is tormented by the mime. Meanwhile, it turns out that the mime is also a burglar who learns that the last people he robbed were also killed. Um, so first thing I'll say, I did like the radio personality guy, Rick, uh, like it, just the whole thing being pushed by his boss to be an asshole on air, uh, yeah. is, you know, it, it's, it's totally like plausible shit that happens all the time. Um, I did like how like he was kind of pushed into being this asshole, but even when he would go outside of work, he would still have that character on, even though that may not have been him, like just being a dick all the time. You're going to do some dickish shit outside of work. Uh, so that, that made sense. Um, also return of DJ master fucking Freddie. Yeah, Hell I, yes. I popped so fucking hard for that. <laughs> Uh, could have used more of the dude. I need a 25 minute episode of Freddie just sh- giving us his best, best fucking mixtape. Uh, <laughs> put that shit in. Like Robert Engel could do that. Like, that should be a, why the fuck did Freddie never have his own rap album? Well, he had his own album, but not a rap album. Yeah, but it, he wasn't, he wasn't singing through all every single uh song in that motherfucker. So he, he, Make it happen, Robert England's seventy five. He could fuck a girl. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm glad it did not come out in <laughs> in that era, because I would have hated it. There's nothing worse than that era's bad rap music when it was a movie tie in. <laughs> oh my god, I'm looking at you, Night of the Demons three credits, fucking oh uh, dude, come Monster on, Monster on. Squad. Oh my god, I hated those shitty rap songs of you, that era. You can't fuck with the PG Psycho Gorman rap song at the end. Okay, of the, that's that, different though. I know because it's like a throwback, and but it's also it's supposed to be that those yeah. old and that's where they're getting it from. So yeah, those but, old ones, those old ones were trying to take it serious. <laughs> um. So once this mime comes in the plane, he starts to torment Rick. I was having a pretty good time with the episode, uh, just especially like stupid shit, like uh, him killing Rick's wife by making a sinkhole in their front yard. Uh, just, <laughs> it, it, you know, silly, but cool. Uh, I also like the irony of uh, Rick getting stabbed in the uh, neck with a rake when his last name is Rake. And, you know, that pre- that prevents him from being able to do his job. So that first half, I thought, was really fucking strong. Uh, but then we get into the second half of the story, and I just I did not like it. I was just like, okay, so this mime's a fucking criminal, like a robber now, and he's being, you know, ch- chased down by, these, by, by, you know, the cops because he killed people. It just, I don't know, it felt really out of left field. Uh, also, the guy didn't even seem like the same fucking character whatsoever. It, it's so like it was weird for me to just have I don't know be f- having this guy be a mime through the first half, and then the second half he's just acting all normal. It just it right. seemed off to me. Uh, so overall, you know, I, I, I it, this is another one where like it's not a bad episode, um, and like the first half was really fucking strong. I was super into it, but then the second half just fizzled out had me clock watching and uh, i was really hoping for something a little bit stronger especially with that first half like anything having to do with killer clowns killer fucking mimes i'm all in uh so it's just kind of unfortunate the second half disappointed me as much as it did but uh what about you Chubb? um well are you gonna be shocked to hear that i actually did enjoy this one yeah. <laughs> but again it, where, where's that like it yeah the first half is better I, again, it's another. I can't argue with your points, but I had a lot of fun with this one too. Like our last couple on that last episode, um, it's definitely finding its new place where it's going, yeah. and and I can see why people were turning on it around here. Mm-hmm. But it's it's definitely a throwback to a style we don't get anymore, and it it's it's just fun to me. Now. One thing I, I'll ask is, do you like does nostalgia have a lot to do with how much fun you're having with these? Yes and no, because like it's funny. Season one, I I must watch that one a lot more. But a lot of these, other than maybe the tapes I have, I don't really remember. I oh, got you. Fair so enough. like, or I'll have a vague memory. 
So there was a nostalgia towards the style and what they're doing mm. versus like of the actual content. So like the the first two of this season, or is it the first four? I didn't I didn't like, mm-hmm. or at least most of them. There was a Freddy one in there. Pro- probably all of them minus the two the Freddy episode. Even those two, they were a little they were weaker for this season. Yeah, they were. Or for this series. So but now it feels like we're in a certain groove. So I'm curious where our future Freddies are gonna come. Yeah. Like our, our how they're gonna land. So yeah. I'm in like I'm I'm at a point of discovering as we go. That that that's fair. I'm just I, I hopefully the Freddy episodes will make this season worthwhile because so far, with a rough, little, little bit fucking rocky for me, uh, but like I said, DJ Master Freddy returns, so we're okay. You needed that, and you're good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, why don't we just rate this one then? Uh, so for me, I'm a two and a half out of five. I was really close to a three, but uh, that second half just kind of hurts it for me. Um, I'm a th- I'm a three and a half. I did have fun with this one, so. All yeah. right. All right, so now moving on to Bloodlines. And in this one, a convict escapes to a deluded wife and bitter son. Meanwhile, a woman worries about her adopted child's behavior. All right, so first thing, Freddie breaking out of jail just at the beginning. It's so silly, but so fucking funny. <laughs> He's just biting his way through the fucking metal bars. Uh, silly shit, but cool. I The first half, I just... I feel like I've seen the scenario of the family member coming back from prison and searching for the money and freaking the fuck out on the whole family. Like just so many goddamn times at this point, like it's just, that's a really unoriginal uh, concept. So it's a big cliche now. Uh, Absolutely. yeah, Yeah. So like it just, uh, that really didn't do, do anything for me at all. And uh, you know, I just, I like Freddie, like, you know, popping up and talking about how he hates kids too. And, you know, <laughs> so, so at least, uh, you know, the Freddie portions of this made up for a little bit, but that first half just, that, nah, that was like probably one of the worst segments all season for me. Uh, but then the, the second half of the episode, uh, it started pretty decent with that weird, like creepy cooking scene. And then, you know, the mother trying to discover the past of the daughter. They basically, fu- or they, more or less, they fucking remake the Omen. Like, that's 100% what the what the second half of this episode is, is yeah. the Omen remake. Uh, so, surprisingly, I actually, I, I like that a lot for the most part, especially with the little details like, you know, them digging up the orphan's uh, grave and then it, it being uh, a jackal in there and, like there, there's a couple of nice homages to the omen, but that ending, man, oh, that just it kind of, it kind of just ripped my heart out. Not being something stronger because I was just loving that second half. Um, so again, this is another one where like things I like about it, especially in one of the uh, half of the segments, but or it's just. That ending, man, I was just like, fuck, I love this goddamn part. And you guys just, uh, you, you like, jerked me off almost to completion, then left me hanging. Like, come on, man. Uh, I get that. Um, I did enjoy this one. Um, not as much as the, the, like, say, the last three. But, like, that second half, like you said, was really strong. It's just that that it didn't stick the ending. But even with that, I, I did like I I haven't hate I didn't hate this. There's been a few or a couple in this season I really didn't like. Um, maybe I set my bar lower moving ahead after this, after we did those. But um, yeah, is it a must watch? No, that second half is is pretty. The strong second there. half I think is one of the better segments of this season for sure. Yeah. But so, even even with the bad ending, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's up there as one of the better ones. But. Yeah, like I said, I didn't hate it. Um, yeah, we got anybody special on this? Uh, no, this, this one? one, no, not really. Um, director James Quinn, he uh, did some second unit stuff on Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> um, okay. He directed Mister and Mrs. Smith, not the Alfred Hitchcock one, not the Brad Pitt one. Uh, one with Scott Bakula. 
<laughs> what the fuck? There's a there's three of those. Yes. Ah, <sighs> so she did some oh. magical world with Disney. Definitely not. Oh wait, 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 wait. I think we a genre connection. He was second unit director on Gremlins. Well, I mean that that that's something, but yeah. Cast wise, I mean, other than Robert England, there's no one like jumps out. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't we uh rate this one and get the fuck out of here? So uh for me, again, if that if they, they would have stuck that landing with the second half, uh I would have easily given this a three, but unfortunately, with that really rough first half of the episode and then the lackluster ending on the second half. Another two and a half uh, out of five for me, average. Yeah, I was going back and forth between that and that, but between two and a half and three. I think the second half was strong enough for me to give it. When when I say three and it's above average, it's above average for the series or at least this season. <laughs> Maybe I have a two and a half. No, I'm, I'm going to stick with my three. All right, fair enough. Fucking we. I mean, you do have an omen tattoo, so I mean, it's 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 kind of it's kind of principle. Technically, it's like not this. omen related because you know how I am about that stuff. It's the same. It's from the fucking omen, you bastard. Well, actually, if you want to be exact, it's from the Halloween three. Uh, sorry, the Halloween six 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 bootleg cover. It's the exact six six six, but six 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 is from the omen. Well, and it's in yeah. the same shape of it. <laughs> The same pattern, right? No, I'll show you the cover later. All right, fair enough. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I think that's all we got for this. So, uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, make sure to check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash flesh wound features. Starts at just a buck. All our social medias are in the description. Make sure you follow us on all of that. And uh, comment what you guys thought about this episode and what you guys are thinking of uh, Freddy's Nightmare Season 2 so far. Uh, other than that, sweet dreams, motherfuckers. Good night.